coming up to our final segment of yeah. the, uh, AWS Glue. Um, have you ever used Glue before? Jess? I have. I like, love AWS Glue. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I thought you meant like glue. Oh, like, like, <laughs> no, to, I'm totally to join kidding. things together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, really? it's the same principle, right? Have AWS you, have you glue you is glue? the same principle. It's exactly what it does. It glues things together. So I'm excited to bring the team up to tell the audience what exactly we're gluing together because we're not we're not uh, your normal school glue, right? I don't know. Maybe we are. We'll have to find out. But uh, <laughs> this is going to be a demo heavy segment. So let's get everybody uh, up on screen. We've got Arun here. We've got Stuti. Always good to see Stuti. And Kinshuk. All right. Let's start. Uh, Stuti, let's start with you. Uh, introduce yourself to the audience, please. Hey, everyone. This is Stuti Deshpande, and I'm joining live from New York. And today we are going to talk about AWS Glue. Arun, how about you? What what yeah. what do oh, you do here today? Uh, yeah, I'm a big data solutions architect. Um, we both are from the same team, Stuti and myself. Uh, so we help customers uh, build uh, big data applications the right way. And last but not least, we're reunited again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. And yes, it is actually, you know, I have the, I would say, uh, I'm the product manager. So I have the easier job compared to Stuti and Arun. So. <laughs> Hey, you know, we're all, yeah, we're all, yeah. Well, and then I get help from Jasmine, right? Like, hey, can I use glue, you know, introduction <laughs> to glue in our marketing content? That was a good one, Jasmine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, let's start with you, Kitschuk. Uh, what is glue? And uh, and why are, why are people about to be amazed in chat as they watch? Yeah, so um, if you follow Jasmine's definition, it is exactly what it is, what Jasmine said, right? The problem that you try to solve is the ability for customers to combine data from a variety of data sources. Um, you know, as part of the data ingestion process, they can ingest it from a variety of sources, apply transforms, do data quality checks. Um, and then you want to do all these actions before you use it for the purpose of, you know, AI, ML, business intelligence, building forecasting tools, et cetera. So Glue is what actually helps customers build their app applications, uh, you know, data applications. I love it. Yeah, and, and that's such a great definition because uh, that stuff sounds simple, but it's actually incredibly complex if you've ever had to do it, right? Uh, we talk a lot about ETL on this channel because we have a lot of products that launch with uh, zero ETL recently and things like that. So extract, transform, load. Please tell me I got that right. I think yes. I did because uh, I haven't done ETL in quite a long time because I don't have to anymore a lot of times, which is wonderful. I used to have to write a bunch of scripts, like pull data from somewhere, you know, check that I got all the data, then do any type of, you know, transformation from data types. Maybe I got CSV. It's got to be JSON to the next location that I'm sending it. And then I got to go load it somewhere else. And I have to take care of all of that, but no, not anymore. Right. Yep. Like that's a big piece so, of. Uh, so AM, you're dating yourself by, by you know, talking about ETL, because now I think what has happened is that over years, there are so many patterns, you know, for, for ingestion, right? There's a ETL, there's a ELT, there's, you know, ETTL, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what has happened is that regardless of, you know, ingestion mode or regardless of the pattern that you're following, uh, there are complexities involved in, you know, starting from connections, starting from just authoring the pipeline. I think as you, as you alluded to, right, it's not just... Uh, you know, your, you know, data engineers or folks who are expert in, you know, um, writing code are, are defining these pipelines. And you have, you know, low code users, you have your, you know, analyst, you know, they, they don't want to spend a lot of time authoring these code. And, and that's where Glue comes in because Glue actually, you know, offers like a notebook interface if you like to code a visual interface, a wrangling interface, if you like, you know, a, a tabular format to, to prepare the data, ingest the data. And, and that's, I think, the, the most important, uh, more important part. Yeah. I, uh... Kishuk, one of the questions that I have that's burning is, oh. I know this is serverless, but uh, 
AIML or business intelligence? Where does that come into play? Yeah, so this is a very good question. So now I'll, I mean, we'll talk into, uh, we'll get into the discussions about, you know, how Glue actually makes AIML happen. And I think the first step in all of these things is connecting to a wide variety of data sources. Because if you cannot connect to, say, my vector database, there's no AIML application. Uh, if you can't connect to your SaaS data sources, you can't build your forecasting tool. So one of the first thing that Glue actually does, it, it allows customers to connect to a variety of data sources and ingest data from, from those sources. Um, and, and we actually have a nice demo prepared for this. So we can probably dive right into the demo. There you go. I, I said there's going to be a demo heavy section here, which we love. Uh, yeah. And just to give you an idea, too, you said I was dating myself. We didn't have pipelines when I was doing There's not there's such a thing as a pipeline. That didn't, wasn't a thing. Uh, but Arun, you're going to take us through how do I actually connect up to uh, my data sources, right? Yeah. Well, that's what I'll be showing really quick now. Let's take a look. All right. Uh, is my screen up? It is up. Okay. You're ready all right. To go. All right, so yeah, there would be at least one person who is new to Glue. So I just thought of starting from the home AWS console landing page. So you can select AWS Glue or you can type in AWS Glue and get to Glue. And we will get uh, get what is like, a, yeah, this is what the landing page would look like. And you can choose to author your Glue job. As Kinshuk said, you could author it uh, via code or you could just use the visual interface. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to stick to the visual interface where it's a low code or a no code experience. You could just uh, work with uh, the default um, source transforms and targets within Glue, right? And right now we are talking about uh, connectors in Glue. Uh, with connectors in Glue, are components that let you um, go to the source and fetch your data or move the data from the source into the target, right? So when we talk about it, uh, Glue by default comes with a lot of built-in connectors to data warehouse systems such as Redshift or Snowflake or Google BigQuery. You can see them here, right? You can see the Snowflake connector, Google BigQuery connector. And part of reInvent, we recently announced support for open search connectors and many more, right? Uh, so you can see all those connectors are on the left-hand panel out here. And if you want to write a flow that uh, talks about ingesting your data from, uh, say, for example, uh, Salesforce and uh, MongoDB into your S3, or if you're thinking about hydrating your data lake, uh, the way that you would build the flow is search for the connector, say, Salesforce, uh, where your data might reside. So you get the data uh, from the Salesforce connector. You just configure the connection details, uh, basically the authentication. And then um, going forward, you just keep building on the flow, like depending on how you want to take this ahead, right? So uh, that's it. Like that, that is how you configure the connector. But uh, that's about like what exists, right? So there are situations where you may not have a built-in connector. So Glue does okay. let you bring your own connectors or also has a rich marketplace, which lets mm -hmm. you kind of uh, choose from. So this is, this is basically the set of all connectors that exist in Glue, but there are also marketplace connectors where third-party vendors and also AWS publish compatible connectors for Glue. Uh, so to name a few, if you can, uh, if you look at, there is a CloudWatch connector for Glue, there is a BigQuery connector, there is CData that provides connectors for CData Cloud, and many more, right? Single store or Mark Logic, if you see, right? So that said, if you look at my data flow here, um, let's take an um, use case where a company wants to get their marketing data, enrich it, marketing data which resides in Salesforce. They want to enrich with uh, a, a geolocation data which is present in MongoDB. Uh, they bring the data, they, they have a filter transformation that comes in between. They enrich the data using a GIN operation and then send the data to a target location, right? So the flow is what it looks like. You just build it using click and drags. Uh, all using the visual interface, right? So we keep it very simple here. Uh, we just talk about uh, connectors, your ability to bring data uh, from several sources and send data to various targets, right? I'll keep it compressed. We will uh, take you through a little more of uh, deep dive demos as the section proceeds, but I'll get back to you. Uh, um, I'll, I'll give it the control back to you, Em. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm going to state the obvious here, but just in case somebody uh, you know, maybe maybe he's new to this or hasn't picked up on it. What this is doing for you, you don't have to go out and figure out 
well, I need to use the MongoDB driver, right? Uh, or exactly. and then the Salesforce uh, SDK or some sort of REST API. Like, I don't have to figure out how to retrieve this data, right? And and like, this is where I think me. what we actually learned, uh, you know, heard from, uh, you know, enterprises is that bringing data into the system is one of the top challenge because, you know, it is a task that if someone can simplify that task, then the data engineers or ETL developers or you know analysts can just focus on the next phase of of the journey, right? Like completing the entire pipeline. Um, and one of the interesting part is that when you ingest the data, it's in the raw format, right? Like you can look at this as, hey, you know, I got this data. There are a bunch of these columns that I don't need, or you know, probably I don't need to know uh, about a specific, uh, or I need to probably combine the data with some other data sources. Um, in those cases, you know, what we do is we offer hundreds of built-in transforms. More importantly, you can actually write transform yourself. And data transformation, just a quick recap, right? It's a, it's a process of shaping the data. Um, so that you can actually use it and it can be consumed by the downstream applications, right? If you want to build a BI tool, the if you can shape the data early in this process, uh, the easier it is for the BI engineer to actually uh, you know, build a dashboard, for example. So now uh, Arun is gonna probably uh, demonstrate, I think he's at that screen, uh, on you know how to do a data transformation and built-in data transformation capability. Nice. Yeah, there might be fields that you can't pass down, like for legal or compliance reasons too, which I think we're going to see some stuff about later on from Stuti, I think. But yeah, let's hear about transforms, Arun. Yep. All right. So um, yeah, we, we talked about uh, the, what the Studio UI looks like, and we talked about how to ingest the data. But like what Kinshuk said, right? Like you getting the data is one point, but massaging the data, cleansing the data, and preparing the data is your uh, next step. Right. So in this uh, use case, what I'm doing is I'm getting uh, a, a reviews data set and uh, obviously uh, several products. Um, and this is what my data looks like. If you look at, you can have a review ID. You do have the product name for which the, the review corresponds to, the actual review text, and also uh, nested information here, right? Uh, so it is nested, but what I, my use case here is I want to group the, the reviews by product and also the review source. So some of your reviews might come from websites, some may be from uh, mobile apps, right? So I want to get an average review per, um, per product. And what makes it challenging for me is the way the data is structured, right? So Glue recently released a flattened transform, which is typically like which is which is designed uh, to make your life easy when it comes to nested data, right? So flatten, as the name suggests, what it does is unnest or breaks down the data from its complex JSON nested structure into a flat structure, and you don't have the the nesting anymore. You could you could just see it out here that my trans like the previous stage was a uh, nested JSON, but that is not anymore which makes it easier for me to uh, move forward and do my next transform, which would be just a grouping, right? So I will show you uh, the outcome from, from that stage. All you did was uh, provided a SQL query, which is basically going to group your results. And let me take you to the SQL query too. Uh, you can see it's your uh, ANSI SQL compliance Spark SQL query, which says select product and uh, reviews and also average ratings from my table. So basically any, any data set that is ingested is ingested as my data source. You can always rename the alias. I just kept on to the defaults and you, you get like, uh, and you, when you group by the product and additional, you just get back to get into the results that we anticipated to see, right? So that's one part of it. Like the flatten is one of the recent transforms. Uh, we at reInvent, we released 20 new transforms and we have hundreds of transforms within Glue. And think about another use case, right? You do have text data there, which is the review. And if you have a machine learning model that uh, requires you to pass the text as arrays, right? All the keywords within the review, uh, Glue makes it easy by uh, giving you a split string transform, uh, which what it does is takes your input text, which is this, and converts that into an array, right? You could, you could see essentially that here, which is the review hmm. words, which is now 
all an array of uh, the individual words, right? So things like that makes it very easy when it is visual. And what happens behind the scene is all of this code. I didn't have to author any of this code, right? All of this just got auto-generated by introducing the transforms, right? And before I close out, Glue also lets you author custom transforms. Uh, what it means is you can bring in your business logic. You can write your code here. And similarly, Glue also lets you create visual transforms. So what it means is if you have a company that has that is limited by developers, uh, you could have one or two developers author these tiny transforms and publish them in a way that other non-developers or uh, ETL developers could just capitalize. They just leverage those uh, pre-written transforms. Right? So I'll give it back to you, and we'll proceed to the next part of the section. Yeah, very cool. I mean, uh... Obviously, these are key steps in data preparation, but uh, I think one of the most important ones is is about data quality, right? And making sure that uh, all that data cleansing, actually, when you're when you get into the the last stage uh, before sending off to an ML pipeline, for example, you got to have quality data, right? So, what can Glue do for me there? Yep. So this is where you know the garbage in, garbage out comes into the play, right? So you need to make sure that you catch these data quality issues early in the process. Uh, because if you find this you know, further downstream, then uh, number one, it's actually impacting the business uh, because you know, the business users are using that incorrect data uh, to build reports and then have to then recorrect those. So uh, the recommendation obviously is that you, if you can catch these data quality issues as early as possible, better it would be. Now, the the obvious data quality issue, right, is um, is that you know I just have you know null values, um, or I have you know text value in a string column. So those are, and obviously, like Glue supports you know catching those errors. Um, what I think today we are going to talk about is some of these hard to catch error messages and hard to catch data quality issues. Now, typically, what happens is you have a steady state of data flowing in. And if you have defined rules like, hey, you know, on an average, I see you know, 100,000 transactions in a week, um, and you create a range of data quality, you say, you know what, if the row count is greater than you know, 100,000 uh, or 120,000 plus minus 10%, you know, uh, alert me or generate an alert, says, hey, there's a data quality issue. But what happens is with that kind of static rule authoring, Right. You run into situations where there are weeks which are, you know, stronger weeks. There are weeks which are shorter weeks. There are holidays, etc. Which means there is a variance in the data input, and that's like I would say a typical example that business runs into. In some cases, uh, you have these, you know, quote unquote black swan events where you know things, you know, shut down or you know travels are not happening and then travels reopen. So these are the events which are once in a lifetime events. Um, and for those events, you actually want to create something dynamic, something which can learn from the data and create sort of dynamic rule sets. So what we launched uh, at reInvent is a new capability where you can define, uh, where we can actually analyze your data and figure out you know, what are the interesting stats and give you the recommendation that, hey, you know, based on the input data, this is what I think your rules should look like. Uh, and those rules can be very dynamic. Like you can say, you know what, it should be the mean plus minus, you know, two standard deviation or one standard deviation. So I now, don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. we are we're running short on time, and I definitely want to see Stuti. Let's actually uh, get into the demo. Yep. <laughs> let's let's see it from Stuti. Uh, can I pull up your screen, Stuti? Um, so we are doing uh, the uh, data quality first. So that's Arun is going to do it. So Arun is going to do the data yeah, quality. I'll, yeah. I have the. the All right, Arun. There you go. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll walk you through. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, it's it's a continuation of the previous thing. We have the data loaded from S3, and we wanted to attach an analyzer. So basically, what it means by adding an atta uh, attaching an analyzer to your data is, or the the data quality transform is, um, you add an element of uh, machine learning uh, where uh, the analyzer monitors your, monitors your data. And how you do that is you add an analyzer, 
say you want to say a uh, uh, Kinshuk example was row count, right? So you could have uh, 10,000 messages coming in today or 10,000 transactions coming in today and maybe 20 tomorrow, right? So that that is um, a normal that could be abnormal. So how do you know what is normal and what's not, right? So in order to monitor for such events, you could attach what is called as the analyzer and then you can decide what column you want to attach this analyzer to. Right now, I already have attached the row count. That's why it doesn't show up, but uh, yeah. In reality, it, it shows you what column uh, it, you need to attach it. You could attach to all of the columns. You could just attach to a specific column. And the end result is, let me take you to the data quality runs. Right, as, the, as you keep running your pipeline, the system automatically learns. So you can see uh, an analyzed result here, which says that row count is 738, which is very low, less than uh, what you usually get or what we expect, right? And you can also see the trend, right? So you can see how the, the row count has changed over the time. And it also gives you a prompt to create a new data quality rule based on what the, what the expectations are, right? And going back one more step back to the, to the visual, if you look at the rule set, you don't need to put statics saying that my row count should be within a range, but instead I could write dynamic rule, which says that my row count should be uh, somewhere, like it should be greater than 90% of my last three uh, runs or last three row counts, right? So that way it makes it very dynamic and you don't need to kind of hard code or uh, play around with static data assets. So I'll, I'll have you, uh, Stuti, back, uh, present the, the remainder of the demo. All right. Great. All right. Thank you. you and ready, Stuti? Yeah. Finally, what happens is that if there is sensitive data, right? I think if there is a sensitive data that is defined, like, you know, PII, uh, driver license number, social security number, that's defined in the column, that's the easier one. But if someone sort of fat fingers it into a text box where no one expected, that's where glue sensitive data detection capability actually comes in and actually generates an alert. What do you used to think? All right. So I'll be super quick in explaining the transforms. I know we're running short of time. So basically, we have this detect sensitive data transform, which you can use to detect the sensitive information. For example, your name, social security numbers, you know, date of birth or addresses. If you have anything online filled on all this information and you want to protect your data and secure your data, we have a couple of options in this transform. So what you can do is you can either do the sensitive data detection and redaction uh, across the rows or through columns. So if you do through, through the columns, you can sample the data size that you would want to uh, run this transform and, and actually have a threshold, which is like uh, defining a minimum percentage of detected rows out of the sampled rows, right? So you can set those thresholds and you can also define the types of sensitive information, right? So we have around 259 uh, checks which are available out of the box, uh, which you can utilize, or you can you know create your own, which is really, really awesome, right? You can bring in your own uh, by using your regex expression. Uh, you can build in your own um, sensitive data pattern depending upon your data set, and you can include that within this transform. Or you can also select multiple categories, which are available again out of the box. Um, if you know all of your sensitive data lies within a specific category, for maybe example, it could be a HIPAA, uh, you know, regulation that you need to follow. Um, you can have those categories available. Uh, we have those available, and you can select those patterns, and then. You can also, you know, have the sensitivity sensitivity level, which is probably like high or low, and then the the actions that you take, right? You first detect. If you want to detect, you can detect based on the date of birth, as per the example that I'm showing right now, or you can redact the de uh, detected text. You can redact based on a hash value. You can redact the text on, you know, on a basically like a symbol or some kind of text that you would want to have. But like, let me quickly show you. So basically in, you know, finding the sensitive data in each row, and if you want to redact the value of date of birth based on, uh, you know, a simple uh, XXX, maybe, you know, based on a simple detected uh, uh, redaction on a text value, you can simply do that. And with the data preview that we have here, you can easily see that the date of birth is now redacted into the text that you would want to have. 
And we also have another option before we close off. We have a partial redaction. So if, for example, you have your SSN data uh, in a portal and you just want to redact only uh, you know, the first few numbers and you want to see only the last few numbers, which is last four numbers maybe, you can do that as well with the partial redaction that we have as an option right now. That's awesome. I, I especially like the um, redaction of date of birth so people can't tell how old I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even though I already, uh, you know, maybe gave away with uh, some of my, my ETL uh, knowledge in the past there. Jasmine, we, we got a question from chat too, right? We do. It says, uh, what's the major advantage of glue connectors over AppFlow? Thanks for this question, Cloud Exploring. Yeah, so both connectors are you know, designed for customers to address their specific use case. I think in case of, of glue connectors, the, the, the reason you use glue connectors is when you actually want to use uh, data from those sources as part of your data integration pipeline. Um, and and that's where I think those connectors comes uh, very handy. Yeah, and also the built-in parallelism uh, that Glue offers. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we are we are over time now, but we had to get through all. The, I mean, it just goes to show you how much has been happening with Glue, right? We could we could barely get through. There's there's so many great features to go check out. Uh, any advice for anybody who's just getting started with Glue, which they. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, give it a shot. I think we launched something which is called example job runs, where we actually pre-populate an example jobs. You just log in and you know all the settings are, are there. So give it a shot. Awesome. All right. Stuti, Arun, Shuk, thank all right. you all for joining us today. Thank you. All right. thank, thank you for having us. Sure. Bye. Great to see you all. We'll see you next time.